Welcome to Weld.com. A while back we did a demonstration on the ESOB Rebel machine here with a, a 3 8 groove plate and I ran a root, uh, a fill pass, and a cap and I was running on the 220 volt side. I was running uh, C25 shielding gas about 20 cubic feet per hour. Again I had an 035 wire in it. Today I'm, I'm curious to do this uh, on the 110 volt side. I like the option of being able to work um, a machine like this is portable, uh, working at home or doing something around the, the house, making a repair. So I'm curious, I mean, not, it's not normal that we would weld a 3 8 plate per se uh, with, uh, with 110 volt, but I'm really confident that this is gonna do well. Um, we'll again, this is just a test, so we'll, we'll see. I, I have my parameters set on this particular machine at 17.2 on the voltage, 225 on the wire feed speed. I have preset an inductance, I believe standard is 35%. I may have turned this up a little bit. I want to soften up this arc just a little bit. Um, so again, I want to, I want to run a route downhill and I want to do a, a fill pass uphill and then the cap, and I'm, I'm looking at arc features and deposition and seeing uh, you know, how the machine runs and how things are filling in. Uh, one thing to note, um, a while back we did a video and we had a viewer call us out on, on our plate leaning back in our stand. And we appreciate that. And the reason that I do that here in the shop in the, in the weld booths and stuff, number one is for safety. I want this plate leaning back a little bit so that we're not up here straight up 90 degrees and it has a chance of falling out. I could redesign our fixtures. Again, we do this for quick training. Uh, we can turn these horizontal. The other reason we did it on the stand here was for a camera angle so that we could get a good view for the, for the camera to, to try to show everything that's going on around this weld. So today, I'm gonna go ahead and stand it straight up and down, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, I've got it tacked onto the table here and I'll repair that later on. I'll fill it in and sand it off, but this is at 90 degrees. Uh, it might be leaning back about two, maybe. Um, again, downhill root, uphill fill pass, uphill cap, three pass weld. So uh, let me get my uh, sleeves and safety glasses on. I'll be right back. I'm gonna uh, put this root pass in downhill. Again, we're running the uh, 030 on, on the ESOB Rebel and we're, we're using the 110 volt side. So I'm gonna point my wire up about 20 degrees. I do have my plate straight up and down and I'm gonna put a downhill root in this pass, or in this plate rather, I'm sorry. Um, and then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna clean the glass out of it, buff it, and I'm gonna put a uh, about two thirds of this is a fill pass. I'll clean that and then I'll put a cap in here. I'm keeping my wire right directly up underneath the weld pool. I'm not weaving out into the beveled face very much at all. I'm watching the little button of glass right above the, where the weld pool forms. I like that. Uh, so far this arc is nice and smooth. And again, I'm just kind of walking this cup back and forth gently in the groove. What I expect to see on the back side is uh, some nice reinforcement, no undercut, or lack of fusion. Let me clean this out real quick. I'll be right back.
Our root pass went in okay. I have uh, I've buffed the glass out with a wire bead brush. Uh, one thing I did notice, I don't quite have the reinforcement on the backside. However, it is fused. It's just a little bit flat. So for me to take care of that, um, I would probably reduce my voltage, probably down to 17.0, and I may even reduce the inductance down and so it has more of a freezing effect to that weld pool. I had my wire pointed uphill and was on the leading edge. Now I'm gonna point my wire straight in or downhill five degrees while I'm going up. I want my wire to always be on clean weld metal. So um, I'm gonna start this at a bottom and I'm gonna run up about two thirds or three fourths the way. part I do really like. This is uh, this pretty nice here. For a 110 volt machine, this is running pretty good. Let me rephrase that. For a 110 volt machine, this is running really good. Keep my wire on the leading edge of the tool. I'm going to move out to the beveled edge about 337 seconds away. Pausing on the bevel phase. I'll let the tune take care of itself. with a two-pound spool of wire, so uh, I may not be coming off of those bridges from the reason I can have a similar wire jumping on the same time, but again, good results, good art pieces. Okay, our bead came out flat. <clears throat> I'm going to go buff the glass and silicone deposits off of this. I'll be right back. This is my fill pass that I've done on this 3 8 plate. I put a downhill root. I did a, a fill pass up about two thirds, three fourths the way so that we could show all the passes again. And now I'm gonna put my last pass or my cap in. I have cleaned the glass silicone deposits out of the weld, out of the weld groove. Um, and I have the mill scale wire bead brushed on the outside of the plate. Uh, I wanna use the beveled edge as a guide so I'm not gonna be weaving outside of this groove. Again, this is just a test. You know, it's not normal that we would run an 030 wire size on this big of a bevel groove, but again, I'm just kind of trying this machine on the 110 volt side. So here's our last pass or our cap. this wire just over onto the inside the beveled edge and I'm watching the, watching the rub through and melt the beveled edge away. Um, right now I'm just using kind of a straight side to side. I'm a little bit under here. It's not bad. I'm going to try another technique about for the last couple of inches. Pull that thing, turn back straight across.
Okay, um, first thing I'm noticing, I, I felt like I was carrying a little too much metal. I may have done better to hold my paws longer on the field pass. Um, it wasn't bad. We've got a little bit of a dark color, which I don't like, so, um, you know, there's some couple of things that I may change, but again, I'm looking for arc features, um, to how the weld pool reacted. I like this. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I could make some some fairly heavy repairs or fabricate some fairly heavy stuff. If this is all I had for a setup to run 030 wire and 110 volt, that's all I had available to me. Um, I, you know, I'm really confident that we could do some stuff. You know, normally on an 030 wire, you're probably doing a quarter inch material, 3 16 eighth inch. Um, so. I'm gonna buff the glass off of this and we'll, we'll get some shots of the finished weld and, the, and we'll be right back. This is our last pass and I went ahead and cleaned the, the glass silicone deposits off of it. I didn't quite get in here. I've got a little black dust in here. Again, you can see the root the fill pass and the cap. And number one thing is I don't, I didn't want any undercut on here and I wanted a nice gentle profile. I really, I really like the way this turned out. Again, this is just a test to, uh, to do a heavy groove on 030 wire, not something we'd normally do, but um, I think it ran pretty good. I like the profile of the weld. Um, I didn't have any starts and stops, but uh, again, no undercut things are pretty smooth. So I, I think that's, uh, I, I mean, I like it, you know, again, it, it's a test to kind of see the limits. We, you know, we could run some heavy stuff and run multiple passes hot, uh, put bigger wire in. So um, I, I like the way that this particular experiment turned out. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, make sure you contact weld.com. Please subscribe to the videos. We'll come out with more every Monday. Thank you.